Thank you. Today, the presidential candidates heading back to the campaign trail, hitting the key states. Their return follows last night's final presidential debate. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump went head to head, touching issues like Russia, the economy, and immigration. Wei Jiang breaks down the debate's biggest moments. To replenish the Such Social a Security nasty trust woman. fund by making the tense sure Sin City showdown has... ended as it began, without a customary handshake between the presidential nominees. But one of the most controversial moments of the night came when Donald Trump refused to say whether he'd accept the outcome of the general election. I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. That's horrifying. You know, every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. At least three Republican senators, including Arizona's Jeff Flake, immediately condemned the remarks on social media, as did Clinton's campaign. This group of uncommitted voters was left divided. It'll inspire disconnection from a lot of the population, from the political process. To say, no matter what the results are, I will be okay with it. Without knowing what's going to happen, I, I don't think anybody would do that about anything that was serious. The third and final debate here in Las Vegas was dominated by substance, from abortion to the economy to Russian interference in the election. Putin, oh, but wait, but, but, from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet, no puppet. Both candidates addressed their looming controversies as well. Clinton on her family foundation. Everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of uh, uh, our country's interests. And Trump on the numerous sexual assault allegations against him. I think they want either fame or her campaign did it. And I think it's her campaign. Voters get their say in less than three weeks when they head to the polls on Election Day. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Las Vegas. And tonight, Clinton and Trump will both deliver remarks at the Alfred Smith Memorial Foundation Dinner that's in New York. The event benefits charities that serve New York's neediest children. And voters have now a decision to make after that final presidential debate. Several debate parties hosted viewers to see the candidates in action here locally. As KBY2's Lauren Clark explains, some people even brought along the popcorn. She's live in the studio. Well, from college campuses to the cinema, first-time and veteran voters got the chance to sit down and see for the final time candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump duking it out on the big stage. Several people showed up to Edwards 21 Theater last night, but not to watch a movie. Instead, they watched the presidential debate on the big screen. But some said it was pretty close to entertainment. To watch the back and forth and the lying and the laughing and the audience. I much preferred being here at the theater rather than at home. The theater was one of 400 across the country that participated in showing the debate, allowing viewers to come in for free. It was spectacular. I, it was an experience I did not expect. I came here for sort of the group experience, but to see both candidates in a format that was literally larger than life. Boise State students also had the opportunity to tune into the debate. At the Stuckel Sky Center, several students and professors watched Hillary Clinton and Trump, but many in the audience already knew who they'd be voting for before the event began. I really wanted to hear more of um, their actual plans, like specifically with the economy. A panel of professors were also on hand to give their input. The solutions they offer sound plausible, that it's often uh, seems to be unrelated to prior events. And Election Day is now just 18 days away. Reporting live here in the studio, Lauren Clark, KBY 2 News. Well, the latest presidential polls show a mix of results. The Quinnipiac poll shows Clinton with a six-point lead. Bloomberg has Trump at 38 percent, Clinton 47 percent. And Reuters also shows Clinton with the lead by four points. But if you look at the bottom there, Rasmussen reports and the L.A. Times, they say it's a tie right now. Have to wait till election day, see how it pans out. Tonight, our parent company, St. Clair Broadcasting, is holding an online roundtable discussion. They'll break down reaction to the final presidential debate. It's going to stream live on our website, kboi2.com. That starts at 5 p.m. And a reminder, you don't have to wait until November 8th to cast your ballot. Early voting is now underway in Ada and Canyon Counties. Here's a look at those locations. In Ada County, you can head to Boise or Meridian City Hall, the Eagle Senior Center, the Ada County Elections Office, or that traveling mobile unit, which is at Micron again today. And in Canyon County, you can cast your early ballot at the Elections Office in Caldwell.
Make sure to keep an eye on deadlines for this election. If you're mailing in an absentee ballot, it has to be received by October 28th. That's next Friday. The last day for early voting is the following Friday, November 4th. To find out more or to see if you are registered, we have a link to Idaho Votes on our website. Just go to kby2.com and click on News Links. And in the midst of early voting in the Treasure Valley, election controversy hits northern Idaho. A prosecutor is asking our attorney general to investigate complaints of voter intimidation. The Idaho Democratic Party says it pulled a campaign worker from a district that includes Bonner and Boundary counties. Police reports say that volunteer was approached by supporters of a Republican state representative who intimidated him.